Hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be taking apart and parting out this old uh, broken drill. Uh, there should be some interesting parts in here, and it should also be a um, a video that'll make you more comfortable with taking things apart and seeing what what uh, electronics bits are salvageable. Um, before I even got started, I got my power supply up here with alligator clips to clip on the different parts of the board and I also have my multimeter with alligator clips to measure different aspects of the, ele the electricity in this board. Um, I also am taking note of the battery that came with this cordless drill uh, because it's battery powered uh, you know that it'll be a DC circuit because there is no such thing as an AC battery. Um, so off the bat, I already know it's a DC circuit, and because this battery is 18 volts, it's safe to assume that this circuit uh, is going to be powered by about 18 volts. So, I've got my ridiculously long screwdriver, and uh, here we go. Let's take it apart. This is a Phillips head screwdriver. Also, on the label, it says 18 volts, so very safe to assume. So, so good practice to have a little uh, plastic or cardboard container to put all your parts in while you're taking the piece apart. Part. Wow, and we have very, very simple circuit going on in here, or at least all of the complexity in this circuit is hidden. I'm going to take apart, I'm going to take out all of the, um, all of the parts, and then when it's laid out, I can show you them. All right, so here's here's the uh, simple circuit, um, and there's there's basically four different sections to this whole thing. There's the battery connection terminals. Uh, these normally were connected to this big old battery, uh, which is probably dead now. Um, so this is where all the power comes in from those two terminals, and then the power immediately goes into this mysterious black box. And uh, there's no screws on this black box. Um, and I think it's safe to assume that there's a good bit of complexity in this box. But all it does is uh, detect how far this switch is pressed. And then it controls the motor based on how far this switch is pressed. So if this switch is only down a little bit, uh, the motor should run slowly, and if it's down all the way, the motor should run at full speed. Uh, the other piece that's connected to the black box is what I believe is a, a power MOSFET, and that's used for switching high current uh, with a low current. Um, and I believe... No, you can't just pull that out. But if you look at this MOSFET close up, there's numbers on it, and uh, if you punch those numbers into Google, you should be able to find find something interesting there. So now uh, I'm going to test to see if this motor works and if this um, motor controller works on here. If any of you take apart a, uh, a cordless power tool, a lot of them are, are not very different than this. Uh, even if it's made by a different brand and manufacturer, it's usually just a, a motor control switch mechanism uh, connected directly to the motor. Um, oh, it's also worth mentioning that this is a, a 
brushless DC motor and there's some gears over here which, which give it more torque on, on this end called the chuck. So uh, I'm looking at where this thing gets power and I'm noticing that there's a red wire and a black wire. It's almost always safe to assume, unless you're doing household electronics, that red will be positive and black will be negative. Uh, in the beginning of this video, I already established that this thing runs off of 18 volts, so we, will are, we are gonna use the power supply at about 18 volts to get this working. Or we're gonna start uh, at less than 18 volts and then slowly bring it up to 18 volts once it's been established that there is no smoking or anything like that. Um, all right, so as you see, I've connected the black wire from the power supply. I've made sure that it's in the black socket over there, the negative socket, and then the red wire, I've made sure it's in the red socket, and I'm connecting it to the terminal that goes to the red wire on the drill and then I'm connecting the black from the power supply to the black wire that goes into the drill. I'm going to make sure that I've got the volts turned all the way down so that I can slowly bring it up to the correct voltage and then I'm going to turn the power supply on. And if you see, it's reading 0, 0, 0.1 volts. So if I press this switch, nothing should happen because it definitely doesn't have enough voltage to, uh, to get going. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring it up to, let's just start at, at 10 volts and see, see if that's enough to get it going. Usually with battery-powered uh, circuitry, the circuit will run at a more of a range of voltages. So if this is an 18 volt circuit, should probably run at 10 volts. But let's see if uh, let's see if I'm right. So it's switched up to 10 volts, and I'm going to try to press the uh, switch. Oh, and look at that! So it does work at 10 volts. And if you look at the power supply, when I've got the switch fully pressed down, it reads one amp. So 10 volts at one amp, that's about 10 watts of electricity. And you can see if I press down on the switch only a little bit, it will move the motor slowly. And when I press down fully, it'll move the motor way faster. So let's, uh, 12 volts is a very standard voltage that we could get from a power supply, from like a normal wall power supply. And let's verify that it works at 12 volts. Yes, works fine at 12 volts. And then let's bring it all the way up to 18 volts, which is what the piece was rated for, and see, uh, see how it runs then. So we're at 18 volts now. Oh, wow. That sounds a lot more like the uh, cordless drills I'm used to. So, uh, that's great. What, what was wrong with this piece was probably just the battery. Um, I also noticed that when you press down on this, this chuck piece has a little bit of wobble to it. So that might have also been one of the reasons someone threw it away. Um, there's really, uh, you don't need to go any further with this, with this circuit in terms of its salvageability. There's many things that could be made just with this little trigger switch and this motor. But if the charge controller did not work, or if the motor controller didn't work, uh, to test if the motor worked, you could just cut off the black and red wires that go from the motor to the motor controller and then test those black and red wires with the power supply and then you could deduce that something was wrong with the motor controller but the motor's fine and then you'd be able to salvage the motor. Um, the other thing you could salvage from this would be the MOSFET. If everything else is broken you could use this power MOSFET to switch a uh, motor on and off. Use your own motor controller. Um, I also forgot one other thing. Because this is a cordless drill, there's an option for the motor to go in reverse. So if you move this little switch to the other side, the motor will move in reverse, 
and then I can push that back to its original position, and then the motor runs uh, forwards. Well, great. I hope this was helpful. I'll be making some other videos of taking things apart and uh, the pieces you can use from them. Oh, also this, uh, this chuck over here lets you grip onto many different cylindrical surfaces. So, you know, right out of the box, you can modify this into something that spins a cylindrical object around and around and around. But there are many other things you can do with this. Conveyor belt, I don't know, anything.